Welcome to another video on data to decisions. In today's video, we'll be building the tornado chart. In the last video, we built a tornado chart or the butterfly chart where only positive values can happen. And in this video, we'll be building one where you can have a negative value as well. So for example, uh, let's say we have a project where we have estimated the project cost to be $100,000. Now, in reality, as the project goes live, many factors can change and this may reduce or increase the cost of the project. Some examples I've given here are material costs, transportation costs, labor costs, exchange rate fluctuation or other things which could increase or decrease the project cost from your estimate. Now how do you present this information? How do you assess the different factors which you know increase or decrease the risk and which is the most sensitive factor? Those are the things that you can gather from a tornado chart. So let's take this example. The changes in material cost or reduction in material cost can lead to overall negative, let's say 30,000 uh, impact to the overall project cost. However, if the material cost increases, the worst case scenario, cost can go up by 50,000. So this is what this bar is representing and it can go from negative 30 to plus 50. So that's a very sensitive uh, factor. So the material cost is the most sensitive factor here. And so there's a huge risk involved depending on which direction the material cost goes. The numbers here represent the 50 and minus 30 represent how much it will change the overall project cost by. So as I mentioned at the beginning, let's say the overall project cost is 100,000. Now it can go up by 50,000 to 150,000 if the material cost increases to the worst case scenario. Uh, if the material cost reduces in the best case scenario, instead of 100,000 project cost, uh, it will come down by 30,000. So it will come down to 70,000. So this is how you will interpret this bar. The same thing can be done for transportation cost, labor cost and everything and so on. The way it is presented, the most sensitive factor will be at the top and it is sorted that way and that is why the appearance looks like a tornado and that's why the name is given as tornado chart. The one downside, obvious downside to this is when I am presenting the material cost impact, I am considering all the other factors to not change. So this chart doesn't do a good job in presenting what if material cost goes to the best case and then the transportation cost goes to the worst case or somewhere in between. So those type of, you know, um, when mo more than one factor is changing, that scenario is not represented in this tornado chart. So just keep that in mind. This is controlling all the other variables. If only the material cost changes, how will that impact the project cost? That is what this first bar is representing. So that's about um, the tornado chart. As you can see, there is a zero line in the middle and always the, the in, in my case, I've said minimum and maximum. So you can think of it as worst case, best case, right? So the blue one represents actually the best case because we are using project cost. So lower the cost, it's better. But you can apply the same technique to uh, other um, measures as well. So you could do timeline of the project. So how will certain factors increase or decrease the timeline or how long the duration of the project is. So depending on what your measure is, higher can be better or worse. In this case, it's cost. So the cost increases, that's not good. So that's a uh, worst case scenario. If the cost reduces, it's a best case scenario. So blue is best case, green is worst case in this case. And again, just some random colors used, but you get the picture. Um, there is always a negative side, there is a positive side. That is the requirement for building this chart. So now let's go ahead and build this chart from scratch in Microsoft Excel. So I'm going to use the same exact data. I've just put it into a new sheet. And now what I'm going to do is to first create it into a table. So select all the values, press Control T to make it into a table. And then now I'm going to select all the values, go to insert. I will go and say 2D cluster bar. And the first thing I'm going to do is to right click on my axis labels uh, and then do format axis. And again, there are multiple ways to do it. So if you don't have that, uh, no problem. Just click on the chart, press Control-1. So it'll open up the side panel. 
and you can now access specific things. For example, if I go to the vertical axis, now it is selected. Um, now I can go with this labels. So this is basically access options, labels, label position, change it to low. So this will move your uh, labels to the loop and that is what we want to make it easy to see. The next step is selecting one of these series. So the orange series represents the maximum or the worst case scenario in the cost side of things. And so um, you can choose it that way. You can also go to the drop down here and choose, I've named it max. Um, so choose that and then you can change the color uh, if you'd like a different color. So let me, for example, since it's cost, let me move to a little bit to a red. Um, and then you can control a lot more of the, you know, colors differently with the transparency and so on. So all that formatting options are available to you. Now, what I want to do next is to also go back here to the series options and then change the overlap to 100%. And then the gap, and you see that now the two bars are lined up because they are overlapping 100%, the two series. And then the gap width, I'm going to change it to 50% because I want this to be a little bit bigger, smaller uh, bars. So now they look more like a tornado. Uh, so that's good. Now what I'm going to do is to click on these grid lines. I'll go here, choose the grid lines. And then I'm just going to remove those grid lines, no line. So now we have a tornado looking chart. So it's it's getting there. I, will, I want to move the legend. So I can do right click, format legend, move to the top. And then I can move it further into the corner. And I'm going to change the title here. Um, impact on project costs. And I can format this however I would like. I can move it. Great. Now I can click on the plot area and make it a little bit taller because I have more space. As much as possible, we use the space to give the clarity of the chart visual. Um, so this works fine. And now I can add the data label. So I can right click, add data labels this way, or I can click on the chart and then go to plus data labels. This will add labels on both sides, on both series. Great. Now I can select any of the label series and then I can change the positioning. So for example, if I want it on the outside end or inside base, we can do so. I'm going to leave it on the outside end. That looks good. Um, but I can change the font. I can change it to the color that we chose for the bars themselves. Similarly, I can go and choose the minimum labels and then change the color to, let's say, we're going to leave it as blue. Um, so I'll choose this blue. There we go. So now we have the labels as well. The axis looks fine. Now we can add the axis titles if you'd like. So for example, I can add the axis titles and this we can say project cost in millions or something like that, depending on whatever the unit that you're measuring in thousands or uh, millions. And then this axis title, um, I'm just going to call it factors because these are different risk factors that we have, we are analyzing. So now we have the chart which has the right labels. And then I can click on the uh, outside border of the chart and then I can put a, you know, a darker border, one with the corners. That gives us this appearance. There we go. So let, let's go and check whether we have done everything right. So this was our target. So we have done everything that looks like the tornado chart. So one thing I, I would want to emphasize here is that the center line is um is zero. And if you want to change the color of that, you can click on that, go back to border, you know, you can change to a little bit darker. You will see now that it gives you that black line. So that's optional, but uh, you can do so if you'd like to. So here's the tornado chart. Just to recap, you can create this when you have values going from negative 
to positive, meaning the best case scenario is the cost going down, and in the worst case scenario is cost going up, right? So where you always have a negative, so it can go down or it can stay at zero, but um, it cannot be positive to positive. Um, but can we build a chart where we can have that possibility? Yes, in the next video, I'll be building a floating bar chart where it can go from positive to positive, negative to negative, all combinations possible, uh, we can do so. But in the tornado chart, which we built in this video, for project management, where you have a baseline and where your cost can go down, your time frame can reduce or increase, we're always looking at negative to positive, and that is where this will uh, apply. So hopefully this is useful. If you have any different ways of building this, or if you have any suggestions, please put them in the comment section. I look forward to hearing from you. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you soon in the next one.